the Watson platform can recognize movements in the house. So they know when you get up in the morning, they know when you turn on the light, they, will, they know when you actually want the coffee. It actually can happen for you because the artificial intelligence of Watson learns it. What's the difference between a learning house <laughs> and an intelligent house? That's then? a good question. Uh, for example, this house is intelligent. For example, what it means, we have blinds protecting the house from the outside sun. And the computer already can see where the sun is in the east. That's where the blinds go down first. So that's intelligence. Mm. The learning bit is the occupant now becomes center point of interest. The artificial intelligence, they now can pick up what your habits are. It can pick up short patterns, also long-term patterns. And then they will ask you, do you want to have that pattern or do you want to change it? So that's, we call it learning. Do you think this type of living is for everybody? I would say nothing is for everybody. We are very, very keen to satisfy what the occupants would like to have. So we offer a lot, but it's really up to the person and the people who live in this house what service they would like to take on. Do you think this is a taster for how we're all going to live in the future? It's definitely a taster. The people who actually built these houses are, tend to be on the older age, let's say between 50 and 70. They like ease of life. So they like to talk to the computer rather than pushing the buttons. Same with the heating system, same with the lighting. They just say it and the computer will learn it and apply it. The data that is within the house stays in the personal ownership. It is not accessible from the outside. Coming up on The Edge. Could communes be the future of urban living? In big cities, we're space constrained, but we have growing populations, so you have a major issue with affordability. It just makes living in a big, big city so much simpler. I'd like to donate these books. Thank you very much. Where do you get that book? A man donated it. Yeah? I'm sorry. But I need to retrieve... I want to leave you looking for this. No. Thank you so much. Return the book. Iberdrola, one of the world's largest energy companies. In 2000, Iberdrola anticipated the global energy transition. Today, Iberdrola is leader in renewable energies. We have invested over $100 billion in renewable energies, networks and storage, becoming the utility of the future. Every time you go up, they want to raise rates again, and I don't really, uh, I am not happy about it. I wouldn't associate uh, Jay Powell with craziness, no. He's an individual who really understands the plumbing of the U.S. and global financial system. We know that uh, there has been ups and downs in, uh, in the negotiations. It's in both countries' best interest to come to an agreement. Nobody likes trade war. Nobody likes the uncertainty of the economic condition. It's not a trade war. I, I call it a trade skirmish. This is a negotiation. Nobody would expect us to give a running commentary. A hard Brexit would be difficult, mostly for the UK. I, I would think that it was a historical mistake. The rules must be obeyed and must be applied the same to all countries. Of course, we have uh, some disagreement, but th this doesn't mean that we can't have a dialogue. OPEC is an independent organization and is not an American organization. The Saudi-Russian relationship is as strong as the Rock of Gibraltar. The leadership of Saudi Arabia represented in the King and the Crown Prince is a red line for every Saudi. The markets are not immune from geopolitical risk. We have been improving our profit. We have a growth everywhere. If you look at our liquidity position, we start from a foundation which is very robust. 
Living spaces are getting smaller, and designers are continually coming up with innovative ways to save valuable space. We went to visit a company that claims it will revolutionize the way we live with robotic furniture.